Okay. <laughs> See you tomorrow. But, Mr. Krabs, Squidward and I don't want to leave work early, right, Squidward? <laughs> First up is the season 12 episode, The Hankering, which has two really cool Easter eggs, especially if you're a big SpongeBob fan, especially if you're a fan of the older seasons. Here's the first one, and here's a little hint. This one has to do with the SpongeBob movie, the original one. Roll the footage. I'm closing the slot pail permanently. Yep, I'm moving to Shell City to make it big in the pictures. Just imagine this mug on a movie screen. 30 feet wide! <laughs> Did you guys catch it? Well, all right, Shell City, which is a location from the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, is actually mentioned by Sal when he says that he moved there to become a movie star, which is really cool because the SpongeBob SquarePants movie is back in like 2004, and this is a season 12 episode. So it's awesome that the current writer still will pay homage to the older seasons and movies. And here's another Easter egg from the same episode. Nothing, nothing, I, uh, lost my shoe. See, found it. <laughs> okay, bye. Now, I'm not 100% sure about this one, all right? But the shoe that Mr. Krabs digs out of the trash seems to resemble the one that Gary wears in the iconic classic episode, Your Shoes Untied. Here's a side-by-side -side. on the left. We got the one that Mr. Krabs digs out in the hankering, and here's what it's referencing on the other side. Really cool reference. I love Easter eggs. And guys, we've got crazier Easter eggs coming up, so let's head over to another episode. Let's take a trip back in time over to SpongeBob season five. This season was from all the way back in 2005, over 15 years ago, and the episode in particular is Slimy Dancing. You know, it's actually crazy that they were even doing Easter eggs this early on in the show's airing, like season five. Anyways though, let's get right into it. Here's the first Easter egg. I love this one. Who remembers the episode Sailor Mouth from back in the day? In this episode, SpongeBob and Patrick come across sentence-enhancing spicy words, which are pretty much swears, all right? They're saying inappropriate words, and whenever they're said, we hear like this dolphin chirping sound effect. Listen for a second. Hello, Patrick. Lovely day we're having, isn't it? Why, yes it is, SpongeBob. This day is particularly lovely. It'll be our pleasure. Hi, Squidward. How the are ya? Yeah, that sound right there. Well, this is referenced in Slimy Dancing, as when Squidward starts getting the cramp, we can hear this dolphin chirp in the background, which is most likely due to him swearing due to the pain from the cramps, which is awesome. And by the way, fun fact, this was the second time the dolphin chirping swear noise was used for censorship over swearing. It hasn't actually been done since Sailor Mouth, so awesome reference to OG SpongeBob. And baby, we've got more. Let's keep it moving and head over to a another episode. We're going to be having a lot of fun today, guys, especially if you're a big fan of SpongeBob history. The peoples of the future must see this so they will know how we toasted bread in the before time so that they can understand the garbage. That'll be a $5 contribution fee. This next one's pretty neat. Now, I don't use the word neat often, but this one's more of like a fun fact. It's still an Easter egg, but you guys will really like this one. In the episode Buried in Time, we get a real life city imagined by Patrick, all right? It's right here. Take a look at the clip. I dream of a town with the perfect blend of commerce and irrigation. Not to mention the breathtaking views. Sounds dreamy, Pat. Now, fun fact, it turns out this is a real place. It appears to be Burbank, California, the home and land of Nickelodeon Animation Studios. So, like I said, fun little fact, let's keep it moving and get back to the real Easter eggs. A thousand pardons, sir, sea tiger. Season 12 has some hit or miss episodes. Most of them are pretty good, and one of the good ones is Who Are Zoo? An episode where SpongeBob and Patrick create their own zoo made entirely out of bubbles. Pretty cool, I wish I could do that. This episode has two Easter eggs. Let's get right into it. Here's the first one. Keep those eyes peeled so it really makes sense. 
Now here's the thing for this one, if you got it, then you've watched a lot of Spongebob, as it's a very specific reference that you'll only get if you watched the classic episode, The Thing. In this episode, Squidward gets covered in cement, and then everyone starts to think that he's some sort of creature. Of course, it's just Squidward covered in cement, but it gets so bad that the SWAT team comes in because of Patrick, and they take him to the zoo. More importantly though, they keep them in this new area known as the Species Unknown Area, since they don't know what Squidward is. Well, this species unknown area, which only ever appeared in The Thing, can actually be seen in this episode in the background over here, which is an awesome reference. And this one is a clear reference. Like, the species unknown area, habitat area, in the zoo has not been there since The Thing, so I love this one. Really cool reference. And there's another one that's really gonna warm your heart if you're an old school SpongeBob fan. Look at this! Hello, folks. Please leave all your sharp objects at the gate. Okay, Grandpa, spread them. Uh, yeah, I love this one too. A pencil that resembles the magic pencil from the Franken Doodle episode. You know the episode with Doodle Bob. Here's a quick clip. Ready for action! Bah, 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 bah. And the episode Doodle Dimension, here's another quick clip. You know who I miss most of all? SpongeBob! Uh, but Patrick, I'm right here. Yeah, that pencil is among the many items seen in the live action close up of Old Man Walker's box over here, which is awesome. I love Frank and Doodle. They need to bring Doodle Bob back again. Actually, wait, they did in season 14. I almost forgot. Actually, as a matter of fact, let's cover that episode. It has a really cool Easter egg in it. <gasps> Aww, Gary's baby shell. They grow up so fast. <laughs> Yeah, so that episode I was talking about where Doodlebog comes back is a season 14 episode called Squidiot Box. Now I'm gonna get into the Easter eggs, but I really want you guys to take a look at some of these hilarious moments from this episode. It's a really good one, and then we'll get right into the Easter eggs. Hey neighbor, can I borrow a cup of sand? I'm all out. Hey. Well, there's your problem. Your box has blown a whimsy gasket. Dude, season 14 so far has been pretty tight. I'm into it. You can see there's improvements being made. There's still some stinky episodes, but this one was a good one with lots of references. Here's the first one. You've probably seen some of them in the funny moments compilation we just did, but here are these awesome Easter eggs I was talking about. My imagination box. I wonder if it still works. Oh boy, it's time for imagination. <laughs> So this one's simple, pretty much. This entire episode is a sequel to the iconic episode Idiot Box. I mean, as you guys just saw, SpongeBob even does his iconic imagination animation, which is really cool. Also, here's a really fun one right here. As we learn in this episode, Squidward's imagination is the most active out of everyone's, which is why he's able to re-energize the box. By the way, we learn in this episode that the magic-like box is powered by people's imagination. And Squidward's imagination is so powerful he can recharge the thing. And this seems to directly tie in with the original episode. As if you think about it, in the end, Squidward ended up having the most fun in the box, and then he's taken away by a garbage dump, you know, in the original episode. But Squidward has the most fun with it, so it makes sense that his imagination would be the strongest. I'm rambling. There's another reference in this episode. Roll the footage. Finally, a place with culture. So back in the episode Mind the Gap, we were introduced to the Jazz Club, all right? And what's really important here is I want you to take a look at all of the patrons inside of it from the original episode Mind the Gap. Take a look at everybody inside. As some of these exact same people appear multiple seasons later in Squidiot Box when this episode returns to the Jazz Club. So really fun reference right here. Like here's a side-by-side -side of some of the characters appearing. Here's this dude right here in Mind the Gap and then here's him in Squidiot Box. Here's another dude in Mind the Gap, and then here he is in Squidiot Box. Love references like this, and let's keep it moving. We've got more Easter eggs coming up, baby. Let's go. Hello? Is somebody there? Um, hello? 
It's considered rude not to answer. Next up is Squid Defense. This one has a really, really weird Easter egg. Before we get into that though, I want you to take a look at some of these funny moments of Squidward learning karate. It's hilarious. We're gonna get right into the Easter egg afterwards, so stay tuned. Uh-huh. What else you got? That's it. That's it! Hi! Okay, it's Easter egg time, baby. Roll the footage. This one's very obscure. Come on, Squiddy, get at the old roundhouse. All right. Hi -ya! This isn't working. So this right here is the Slug Buddy punching bag, all right? It might seem like an insignificant background object or something like that. It first appeared back in the episode The Great Snail Race. In this clip right here, take a look. Faster, 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 go! It then appeared later on in the episode, The Way of the Sponge, when SpongeBob is trying to get his black belt. Take a look at this clip. And this is where the Easter egg comes in, as it just randomly appears in Squid Defense in this scene. I already showed you guys the scene, but in this clip right here, we don't need to play the, the clip with audio again, but there it is, the Slug Buddy punching bag right there. Really cool that it reappeared again randomly in this scene. They could have used any punching bag, but I don't think it's a coincidence that they used this one with this design. It's 100% a callback. <laughs> Patrick? Here's another nostalgic one from an older episode, a much older episode. The reference can be found in the more recent episode though, Pat Hart Squid, and it has to do with a certain garden. Here, take a look at this. Okay, well that's every available house in Bikini Bottom. Did you catch it? Cause it's a special one. So back in the episode Truth or Square, as you guys seen, Squidward gets his garden, all right? And he loves this thing. And look, in Pat Hart Squid, it reappears during this scene, which I love. I love that for my boy Squidward getting his garden back. Now, that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. But if you want more Easter eggs, click this video on screen, where I cover even crazier Easter eggs that you guys have not seen before. So click it, click it, and I'll come to your house and I'll give you your own pet. Pet snail just like Gary. So click the video. I love you guys and I'll see you over there. Peace.